you're invited to our Sedona Transcendence Retreat taking place during the fall equinox, September 21st through the 23rd. Experience Transcendence in the Vortex with channelers and teachers opening portals into higher realms. And our special guest, Ruben Langdon, hosting a CE5 contact event and galactic roundtable. Meet myself, the host, Suzanne Ross, and all of the presenters. And so when we talk about the ascension and the new earth, I think it's really important to share the techniques for ascending and what does ascension really mean? Ascension, the act of rising to an important position or a higher level, <laughs> right? We're rising to a higher level. This is an uprising and many of us are feeling a, a rushing of energies right now. The ascent of Christ into heaven on the 40th day after the resurrection and so we are talking about heaven. And when we talk about heaven, we think about Christ, right? Christ consciousness. And I really do believe that the second coming or the return of Christ is really the return of Christ consciousness. And then there's the transfiguration, a complete change of form or appearance into a more beautiful or spiritual state. In this light, the junk, I mean, this is literally a definition on Google about transfiguration. In this light, the junk undergoes a transfiguration. It shines. What's the junk? It's the junk DNA that physicists have been talking about that lies dormant within our being. And we'll definitely go into more of that because nobody's going to leave here with their DNA lying dormant. <laughs> We're going to ignite it. Right? Because in the light, the junk undergoes a transfiguration. It shines so that we can become our shining light body. Christ's appearance in radiant glory. And so that's what we're going to be. We're going to appear in our radiant glory through teachings and practices. <laughs> I love this graphic because it's important to recognize where we're at right now, right? I came up with wilder than fiction because who here since they awoke on their journey has been going, what the f <laughs> There's often reference to what's termed the Metatron's cube and this form of sacred geometry which in our history books is, was created by yourself, by Metatron. Um, can you go into some definitions or uh, explanations of what this cube represents and how is it used and how do you use it? The connection of everybody sitting under the stars, and we play, you know, Atal plays these amazing sound bowls and gongs. So we're getting this amazing uh, sound healing vibration uh, under the stars, and you know, in the best, the best setting that you could possibly get a healing, uh, um, you know, uh, type of sound healing. Uh, and then I incorporate breath work into the um, into the mix to uh, to sort of open the portal. So we're doing breath work. We're, we're do, so wh whether you, you have a see, you know, a, an actual craft show up or not, it, it's just a nice um, coming of together and gathering of, 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 uh, of people and the, and the actions themselves or taking those actions is a, is a reflection to the universe that, yes. hey, I'm ready for this contact thing. I'm ready yes. to, to do this.
within the all consciousness was the intelligence to create of course the illusion of separation mm -hmm. and within that became the 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 possibility the potentiality and the actuality of uh, bringing consciousness into form if I'm being positive why am I not creating what I want because frequency comes from a lot more than your thought because your thoughts are only a small part of what is emanating in your frequency and uh, there is a lot that is unconscious that is creating your form you are not consciously thinking all the time hey cells join up with one another and make this thing and make these bones and make these things so you are a, primarily an unconscious creation but if you want to learn how to bend the matrix per se you travel more deeply into what is creating this unconscious creation some of these things are so uh, innate to your experience you don't even bother to think about them as being something that you can work with in order to bend the matrix of your reality There are two states that uh, form comes into manifestation. One is manifestation and one mm -hmm. is knowingness. It's the mind's judgment that is creating good and bad, light and dark. And where there is judgment, there is mind. And where there is mind, there is resistance. And where there is resistance, there is manifestation, but there may be resistance to what you're actually wanting to manifest. Greetings with respect and salutations. We are very, very happy to be in your presence today. Thank you for being here. Yes, you are very welcome. And our ability to come through this channel in this way, we have spoken the opportunity to teach the human collective of how to find the center within themselves. And we've given a definition that remains steady and will remain steady through the course of our work of what being in the center involves. Being in the center involves having a point of neutrality of energy, never being shaken from what you are looking out to every possible center of energy present within each person in each moment. When you are in the center, you look outward. Bonjour mes amis and welcome to my channel. So I am Sandrine, an Ascension Mentor and a Trans Channel to the Actorian Healing Council. So today I would like to present you with something very unique that I have never done before. So I have connected with a friend to go deep into a Q&A that will literally change your life because not only do we bring in the Arcturians in to answer very important, important questions about things that are happening for us as a collective in this time and space reality? But what actually this session brought was many activations. 
So during this session, I welcome my friend Anok, the head of the council, the healing council of actors. So I welcome him in my body and you can see that my voice change and I do all these like kind of sounds and things with my hands and like I talk in a different way and I will answer questions that I had prepared before with Melissa in meditation really tuning into the collective as well as our own experiences to bring in information that is very important for us. I would like to introduce myself so everyone knows what we will channel, where it comes from. I am Anok Akhtarian from Seven Dimension, residing on Akhtaros, now residing actually in spaceship just outside of Earth with the group of the Healing Council and three of our council present there around Earth right now in spaceships. You are invited to join us for an immersive, experiential transcendence retreat taking place in the magical, mystical vortex of sacred Sedona. Sedona is a sacred site with a high frequency spiraling vortex conducive for a transcendent experience. This retreat features well-known channelers who will channel galactic and celestial guides. They will also teach how to channel so you can tune in to your own guides. Enjoy this online discussion between myself, Suzanne Ross, host of this retreat, Ruben Langdon, who will be facilitating the Galactic Roundtable, and the channelers who will be bringing through the Galactic Guides. Greetings, beloveds. I'm so excited that you've joined us for this promotional video that's going to be talking all about this phenomenal three-day Sedona Transcendence Retreat taking place right here in the powerful vortex of Sedona during the fall equinox where the veils between interdimensional realms is thin, making it very conducive to contact our interdimensional brothers and sisters. As part of this event, we will be having a very immersive experiential retreat. And that will involve on stage presentations, some sound journey performances, as well as these presenters going out into Sedona's sacred vortex sites and leading some ceremony and ritual meditation and also some indoor workshops where they'll be directly training how to channel spiritual practitioners will bringing in 8D Merkaba embodiment and some different really cool topics and themes. So it's, you know, experience, it's learning. And then we have a super cool experience at night called a CE5. And Ruben and Rob, have this uh, CE5 sort of uh, process that I'm sure Ruben will expand upon that you know is a really effective way to connect in with the galactics. Also, as part of this event, uh, Ruben, who is the host of Interviews with EDs, Extra Dimensionals on Gaia TV, will be hosting an Extra Dimensional Roundtable with the channelers at our event. So I'm gonna turn it over to Ruben Langdon. Thanks, Ruben. Thanks, Suzanne. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I this, the, this sort of idea of a round table has been sort of um, in the ethos and in, in my uh, uh, sort of zeitgeist for a few years, ever since I did the show, uh, I was thinking, wouldn't it be cool to get some of these channelers together to do sort of a real-time um, galactic 
uh, welcoming, you know, how kind of like, you know, the idea behind it was, uh, if you see like the UN and the United Nations gets all these different nations together and they have this sort of table of gathering and they're talking about different policies and different things that can help um, humanity move forward, that kind of idea, but on a cosmic scale uh, or, you know, extra dimensional scale. So we have these different representatives of these different, um, some are collective consciousnesses, some are individuals, um, but a, uh, yet they're still representatives. So they're, they're coming together on this, this table where we can ask and get different points of view from almost in a sense, different nations uh, and, and ask questions of how we can help navigate our, our uh, human experience here. What, what knowledge do they have from, how do they do things in their realities or in their dimensions and their civilizations um, and, and how did that, how they navigate things and bringing that through in this sort of um, round table experience. So it's always been sort of a dream of mine and here we get to do it is the first time. So I'm super excited. Thank you. That does sound exciting. And I like how you compared it to a UN. This is like the whole star system. And right. what would be better than, you know, inquiring with other races who are more advanced and evolved about, you know, their civilizations and maybe use some of that as models for improving our own. And so then I'd like to introduce those who are joining us today. And we'll start with Rob and Rob, maybe you can help our audience understand who you are, who you channel, and yeah, you know, what your mission is. Hey, hello, everybody. Uh, I'm Rob Gothier. Um, I've done channeling for a long time. Uh, I channel a lot of beings, probably over a thousand different ET consciousnesses. Um, that's why my wit, a nickname is the ET Whisper, and um, I, I've been doing this for a while since 2010, and since I've met a lot of different great beings, uh, but mostly my guide, Trev and Ardiff are connected with me and they have bring through um, some resonant information. It's resonant to me. That's why I've been able to continue to channel them. But um, uh, they, they have a, a lot of good insight about how humans can bring in their own guidance and how they can connect to their own guides too. I think that's something that's very important uh, at this time of Earth's consciousness, connecting with yourself and with your guides is probably the most important aspect for internal uh, connection and external connection. Even though all, all of it is oneness and all of it's connected, um, it's still very important to know yourself. And then when you learn how to connect outwardly uh, and connect with your guides, it, it just brings you an expanded perspective. It's like spending time in a room with a uh, with five other interesting people that aren't the same as you, you get to learn more about the world, more about yourself and more about the greater thing. And uh, that's what's exciting me about the round table and about the, the weekend retreat too. Thank you. And Sandrine, so when you're. Yes. Tell us a little bit about your beings that you bring through and sort of your own personal mission. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Susan. Uh, so I, I co-create with my High Council of Light and uh, I'm a member of this High Council as just having a human body and being able to take all the you know human actions and sharing the voice to be the voice of my High Council. And so they are, the High Council is made out of many amazing uh, beings of the light. Uh, so I co-create very closely with galactics as well as ascended masters, animals of powers, many dragons, many angels and archangels. And so we are here to bring a body of works with spiritual teachings that help people remember the truth of their own divinity. So it's how can we embody our multidimensionality? And that is really helping us to understand that we are here already living as as one within the one unified field. It is just that we are here to remove veils of illusion, preventing us from embodying that truth that we are a unique algorithm, a unique blueprint of source of Sophia God itself. So the teachings that we share, it's all about choosing love, love as a guiding force, you know, you know, living with kindness and all of these beautiful principles that so many masters of life have or light have already shared, you know, with humanity before, 
But what I particularly love about uh, the teachings that we share is that it weaves ancient knowledge that we connect um, from, like, so we work a lot with Atlantis, Lemuria, and then Egypt, for example, also Shambhala, and we weave that with new quantum technologies. And so for that, we work with different portals, multidimensional teachings, uh, a lot with galactics. And so we drew, we draw a lot of graphics. So I'm very bad at drawing, but I can do like little stick men. And so stick men are very present during my transmissions. And it is always my high council. Well, I find that I have a very good sense of humor, but it's my sense of humor, but it's often kind of like it's potent we poke people with love and kindness, but it's also like having a good laugh because they always say, dear little human, you are here to have fun. Why are you so serious? Just, you know, relax and have a good, have a good party, have a good banter. So I really like it because it really touches the heart of many because of the, um, the potency, the depth of what is shared, but also the ease and the grace that flow through that. So it's really a great honor, you know, to be living this mission because it's a, uh, and I'm sure that, you know, people here would relate with that. It's like, it's not even work. It's like, it's an extension of me. It's like doing my purpose. I was born to do it. Retirement is not even a concept that I would ever embrace. It's like my whole life is this. So I'm super excited to be able to, you know, share and co-create with uh, amazing other beings of the light in human form <laughs> and to do all of these things together yeah thank you oh thank you and georgia jean <laughs> greetings dear ones indeed we have sort of put georgia aside in order to introduce ourselves and give you uh, more of the nature of our intention to come forward into the round table with you we have been working with the channel for quite a long time and we have enabled her to access multi-dimensional concepts throughout all consciousness but specifically coming forward into this round table we want to bring forward the teachings of the significance of heart centering as you are opening up your multi-dimensional and galactic and energetic consciousness you are powerful creators and you have the power really to generate any kind of reality that you want but specifically we came forward to work with the channel to assist in the evolution of consciousness on the planet and to bring you into the 5d creative experience the difference between the 3d and the 5d being that the 5d creative experience is generated through the heart it is already seated in the truth of who you really are which is an infinite and powerful beings that you are already infinite love infinite worthiness infinite abundance infinite deservedness and infinite creative power when you're seated in the heart this is how the 5d collective reality becomes generated if you remain seated in the mind and you are opening up multi-dimensionally you will project the illusions that are generated by the mind into the multi-dimensional the illusion of polarity the illusion of separation the survival decay and entropy of the body the things that characterize the core human experience for a long time and we are here supporting you to take the opportunity of the shift in consciousness as many of you are hybrid energies incarnated at this time to assist in this and to leap into the fifth dimensional reality generated by the heart because we are certain that you will all be having way better a time <laughs> experiencing a reality even a multi-dimensional reality generated by the heart as opposed to lingering in the mind because this is where things can get a little bit strange for you dear ones as you accelerate the energies that are coming through as you are dissolving the maze of the egoic framework as your consciousness in a sense is becoming looser dear ones it is essential that you become seated in the heart and allow the heart blueprint to project forth the new consciousness that you are seeing seeking if your mind could generate a new reality it would already exist and this is why surrender and submission into the heart at this time no matter what you are doing dear ones whether you're trying to improve your for anything from your love life to attaining the embodiment of your 
entire galactic multi-dimensional consciousness the gateway is the heart and this is what we are overjoyed to share with you some simple techniques and some powerful uh, transmissions and sort of delete files to help dissolve that mind maze matrix and bring forth the new consciousness reality of the heart we are delighted to do this and we look forward to it greatly thank you thank you rob sandrine and georgia and now i'll turn it over to the moderator of the round table to ask questions either of rob sandrine and georgia and or the beings that they may uh be able willing to bring through thanks ruben mm -hmm. all right we're gonna i didn't realize we're gonna go there today uh cool what i love this opportunity here is sort of the with this trinity of of these uh, uh, different channelers and energies that will come through, the way I sort of saw it was a nice combination of um, maybe mind, body, and soul might be a, a good uh, connect, a good way to explain it. This is just from my perspective as being, you know, this this having my show and witnessing channelers from different um, uh, different types and energies is. Uh, you know, we have more of the single um, uh, entities that uh, Rob usually brings through with Treb and, and, and Artif, more individualized consciousnesses that give us a very clear, more of a mental mind, uh, a mental roadmap that we can connect with, a very heart-centered, but still I'm just sort of, you know, using broad terms here to um, connect with on an individual to individual basis, because there's something that's very um specific to the human journey with our individual past yes. and then uh and you georgia uh and um the council being more of this collective consciousness more of this um many bringing in from 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 a, a wider spectrum and, and then sandrine to um more of this uh council of a little smaller still a collective but a smaller team so to say so i feel like we get we get the uh, small medium and large of all the different consciousnesses to bring to this uh, galactic round table, um, this interdimensional round table, because we're, we're sort of covering all the basis here with, uh, with this type of, with, with the unique individuals that we're bringing here to, to this round table. So I just wanted to acknowledge the scope and the wideness and, uh, and yet still covering the individual uh, in the smaller uh, stage as well. So just want to throw that out there. If anybody wants to jump in and, and piggyback on that, go ahead. I can share a little bit. I like that perspective with the individual, with the collective, because it represents a lot of things of what we're going through as humans too. We have our individual journey. And a lot of us have seen that over the last five years as the world's kind of went a little crazy. Um, we go through the individual thing, you know, what is your individual uh, experience? What's your individual decision? What's your individual mindset? And then we have the collective thing, which is uh, big groups of people that split up and in, into their own, which help them find more about the individual, but also help them do a lot of other things. And then the community, which is the smaller collective, um, the localized community, the energy about people around you, which is where, you know, our consciousness is headed towards and, and a lot of things my own guides have said. Um, and a lot of things you notice, you know, you see people gathering up in, in towns and communities. And I think it's a really beautiful thing. So uh, very symbolic, very beautiful. I like that. Yes, I, I love I love this because before we started recording, we had this just moment where the, the three of us, John, uh, Rob and myself, we shared um, about not really watching transmission from other channels. It's like, oh, sorry, I haven't really watched much or just a little bit. But then um, I love the how we are weaving this multidimensional, um, this, all of these different pathways that we can each find into discovering more about who we are and for a lot of us, it's like we know that everything is inside of ourselves already. So we are we are our ultimate teacher and we can do the inner work. And especially when we are a channel, it's like of like, oh, I'm kind of receiving everything. Why should I, you know, uh, connect more to other people, which could distort what is flowing through my channel? But as I perceive this collective now coming together here, I can I can say I'm very, very hot because you know, usually my my body temperature increases with the excitement of my high council. And now I can say the excitement is very high because it's like, how can you 
actually expand your consciousness so much that your collective co-creates, you know, on this vast multidimensional level with Rob and Georgia, and we create this huge quantum field of pure love, connection, co-creation, therefore transcending the need of saying, oh, this is kind of like my teachings, this is the what, what I share, but now we are all speaking from this one unified field that we create as we all bring our team together. And they say it's really like the path of fifth dimensional embodiment already creating, finally, you know, the golden age of bridging the old and the new is really being able to be so fully connected, so, you know, soul blueprint embodying the truth of our own divinity that then there is no more resistances, there's no more walls. There is literally nothing that prevents us from connecting on the deepest level of all, sharing our art and our passion. And I can just see that you are as passionate as I am in doing this, so I can really feel the the excitement and the power of uh, us coming together is just beyond what I could express in words and what I can even feel. It just, it just goes like, and it's only starting, you know, it's going to peak during the equinox and I cannot wait <laughs> to have you all in person as well. Thank you. <laughs> One of the interesting things about bringing together consciousness that is of various varieties, and of course, in your human condition, right now you are saying, how do we all live together? How does this group live with this group? How does this group live with this group? Because you are continuing to process your reality through the linear mind, which is defined by separation. And you have been living in your linear mind for so long. When you come up with an energetic or a human quandary of coexistence, the linear mind starts to short circuit because it cannot piece together things that are in opposition to its major contract constructs such as polarity and separation and this is what we predominantly want to share with you dear ones is that when you become seated in your heart and you create from the heart the heart if you could see the mechanism that is actually the creative force behind the heart you would understand its miraculous power to work beyond the limitations of the linear mind, to unify that which to the linear mind says, well, I don't know how this is all going to work because it's used to operating with A plus B plus C plus D equals half the alphabet. <laughs> the heart, the way it operates, it is the way to bypass the confusion of the linear, linear mind and to deliver what is good for you and for everybody simultaneously. And this is a very new operating system for the human consciousness because you have been defined for so long by the survival consciousness, which is based in limited resources that you are all competing for. So oppositional forces, when things feel like they are other different oppositional, it activates the survival mind to say, no, we cannot unify this field because there isn't enough to go around to everybody. But the heart always generates beyond survival consciousness. It is seated in abundance. It unifies all elements in a way that brings forth the perfect balance for everyone and everything, including your magnificent earth, including your magnificent trees and plants and animals, and of course, all who inhabit the earth as human constructs and hybrid human constructs as well. And this is what we would like to impart. How does it all work? The mind doesn't know, but the heart certainly does, dear ones. The heart knows. Excellent. Yes, that was actually the the theme of the question that I was going to ask was about how do we unite with so many um, different belief systems yeah. that are going on the planet with different um, situations for each individual um, uh, who might be tuning into this information. We yes. all, all have very different lives and different um, uh, struggles that we're dealing with on different levels. Um, there are more- 
Mm-hmm. Yes, there are well. more co- there are more collective themes like yes. the financial uh, things and 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 uh, um, the physical reality around us that uh, that's if when we're in the larger communities and cities that we're all sort of experiencing some of those larger bigger themes that may be similar but ultimately each and every one of us is so individual in our experience that um, it does create. More uh, conflict. It, the mind more conflict, can only yeah. create conflict, dear right. one, because there's a conflict based system, you see. And as you are seeking as humans, individuals within yourselves to unify and within your families, neighbors, communities, and the whole planetary coexistence, we can tell you right now, dear ones, that you cannot fix what is broken by the thing that breaks it. And this is why, again, submission into the heart, which is really, and the heart may sound, oh, that sounds a little bit fluffy and woo-woo, but (laughs) what we are saying, dear one, is the heart is the ultimate intelligence behind all creation. It is the ultimate supercomputer. It is the ultimate AI. It is the ultimate generator of a new reality. Humanity needs to focus not on trying to fix its problems with the mind that has created it, but to come into submission into the heart, to open up, to allow new consciousness come in, you will actually start just generating reality beyond these issues. Think about it like this. When you have a house and you are selling it, you spend a bit of time fixing it up. You spend a little bit of time sorting it out. Oh, well, we will keep this furniture. We will get rid of this furniture. We will, you know, we will doll it up a little bit. But a true movement onto the 5D means leaving the house, meaning you have to leave that house and move into your next house. You don't continue to try and fix the old house when you're moving into the new house and those houses in terms of the evolution of consciousness dear ones is bandwidth if you remain in the the 3d mind-based bandwidth you will eternally have these problems that you're trying to fix this is why the mind is no solver of the grand solutions you decide well we want to keep this we want to leave this and you move into your new bandwidth dear ones and we are happy to bring forward tools and techniques that will assist in the rapid movement of house for those who attend because as you can see humanity had a sort of (laughs) an opportunity if you will to try and get it together in a unified way and all it did was create more polarity because in all um, areas of society people remained in their minds trying to fix something that was generated from survival consciousness and it doesn't work that way it's all to drive you into realizing the futility of the mind to fix anything to come into submission to the heart so the mind and we're talking about the mind as a tool can now learn a new from the heart and then just begin to start to generate a new reality that's really what's on the table for humanity dear ones (laughs) beautifully said yes thank you so much yes well with that uh that thought in mind or that that sort of um uh question uh, which has been answered beautifully through georgia in the council uh or the circle um then uh sandrine could we could we tap into the council and see what they have to say um to perhaps uh, give us some advice on helping to navigate through these um, turbulent times. Certainly, we are very, very excited to be able to share on this subject. You see, everything always depends of the lenses or the veils that you choose to place upon your consciousness to observe a certain aspect of your reality. So the human can be very well born into this world and seeing, oh, this world is traumatized, every human is broken, the planet is completely destroyed, this is a horrific situation, I am doomed, why am I here, this is a mistake, I must be trapped in the, in the wheels of karma, so there must be something wrong with me, because I'm still here, I shouldn't be here, oh, I'm not from here anyway, I'm from the stars, this is not my home, there is a bug in the system, God forgot about me. These are the lenses of 
distortion of polarities, of contrast or trauma that most of humans actually place in front of their eyes, in front of their ears, in front of their mouth, in front of their heart. And they wrap their heart around that. And then they think that there is something wrong with them, that they are separated from everyone, that they are so alone. No one understands them. Every single human has the same problems. I feel lonely. I don't know why I'm here. Who the fuck I am? We do swear every now and then. Apologies. This is not Sandrine's first language. So she takes it as an excuse to sometimes channel the power of dismantling outdated paradigms through the F word. So as we say this, the, the purpose of all living frequencies is always evolution. Every single being through multidimensional time and space realities are there to evolve. You have chosen planet Earth, which is the most wanted place amongst all at the moment. Because why? This is where you can activate accelerated pathways of evolution for your soul. Because as you have noticed, it is not easy here. So being able to find yourself, being able to find soul alignment, to live from the heart and to choose differently than trauma, to choose differently than identification with suffering to choose differently than separation and contrast is actually a very fast training in terms of expansion of consciousness. So remember that every human that chooses even for one second kindness over a mean world, gentleness over harshness and resistances, curiosity, faith, prayers, an open heart over anything that closes up the heart, closes up connection, closes up the field, every single step in that direction is a huge amplification of light within the self. So humans, they choose many different pathways of evolution. Each human choose the one that is the most appropriate to them. If they like it or not is irrelevant. So you can release the pressure of choosing to, to feel a martyr, choosing to feel a victim or uh, being really aggressive to our society. Or you can actually choose to say, okay, I am here. I was given all of these different tools at the moment. And what can I do to use them at the highest to actually create a life for myself? So it is really always a balance. We always like to share that there is a dance. You always dance with your own sovereign consciousness, but also with the consciousness of humanity, because it's everything about you and nothing about you, because you are God, you are everything, but you are also nothing. So every single human that is actually on the planet is a manifestation of some of the fractal reflection frequencies that are present within your own universe. So every single thing that you witness outside of yourself is a ripple effect coming from different architectures of your architecture of oversoul network. So if you understand that everyone out there is some sort of manifestation of an aspect of yourself, you can find a way of recognition around kindness and co-creation and caring for others while also honoring your own sovereign boundaries, your own sacred yes, your own sacred no. Coming to humanity, and placing yourself as a victim, thinking that, oh, there are so many wars, there's such a violent rape culture, uh, there's so many discriminations around ethnicities, gender identification, health issues, and you continue picking that up, those contrasts as a way of navigating life, it's literally you call more contrast in your life. This is why the darkness is there. The darkness is ne not there by mistake. The darkness comes as bringing contrast. You don't want darkness in the world. Stop saying, I need contrast to evolve. I don't know what to do with my life. So I'm just going to wait for something nasty to happen to me, to shake myself and to say, fuck, fuck, I want to live. I want to live. I'm born here now. I'm meant to be alive. Everybody is scared of death. Everybody that is dying that of terrible accident and illnesses, very, very sad for humans. But they all say the same thing. 
I don't want to die. I wish I had more time. I regret so many things. And yet the living that are supposedly healthy are actually mentally ill because they don't really want to live. Humans are really interesting beings. So if you relentlessly, every single day, choose life, choose love as a guiding force, anchor into your heart and in your body and experience the juicy pleasures of life, you have literally an abundance of natures and fruits and food and the oceans and the rivers and the mountains. It's a paradise. Earth is a paradise. So when you choose to move in the direction of following your heart desires, then more and more this attachment to suffering, which is attachment to contrast as a way to perpetuate your everyday matrix programming that you are actually generating yourself, then you start, this programming starts fading away. So the attachment of 3D matrix system, they become thinner and thinner and thinner until eventually they become far away in the distance and what stays is you standing tall and straight on the broad crown of the head reaching high to the sky and the galactic realms and feet planted deep in the earth and you just walk the earth like the angel that you are because you are an angel in a human suit you are here to remember that for yourself but not only for yourself, for all the people that are going to be touched by you, by your smile, by your kindness, by your quirks, sometimes by your inadequacy. Whatever you do to open the heart of other people, that is the true purpose. The true purpose is to evolve in this human world by finding the self residing fully into divine conscious sovereign embodiment of everything that you are saying yes to all of your heart desire and then sharing all of these rose petals all of this light all of this kindness this generosity this love this light with everyone else all the plants all the animals that are lucky to cross your path you are every single human is literally an angel and if we can start perceiving every human as an angel rather than a broken, probably demonic frequency, uh, you know, hiding maybe in a robotic uh, clone to suit. If you remove that saying, maybe it's a part of the truth because there's a lot going on behind the veils. Yes, but what do I choose to want to focus on? I would choose to see the light of God in every being that walks on this planet. And this can be the premise that allows me to connect with all of all of humans and all of like also beautiful animals and plants so we said this is very exciting this is very exciting times because remember dear humans that it is the first time that humanity is going through an ascension process with the physical body on a collective level we had atlantis we had lemuria we had ancient egypt pockets here pockets here pockets there only a few, only, only a few, only a few. Now it's like mass, it's mass awakening. It is the greatest, most exciting times. Humans that live here now, and especially on this panel, humans attending Ascension Retreat happening in Sedona, these humans, you are born for a reason. Now is the time to shake yourself up and to pick yourself up and to be the light that you came here to be, because this is the most exciting time, yes? So we are very excited to participate in this. Thank you very much. And now we would love to share the microphone with our dear friends, Rob and Ruben. Thank you. Yes, let me. thank you so much. Let me just um, re, re, rephrase the question for, for um, Rob and Ardith. And um, this, this theme right now of uh, so much separation going on on the planet with, with different ideas and belief systems um, we heard from the counts from uh, the Circle of Light about and Georgia about tools to connect into the heart. Um, we just learned from the council about um, not demonizing everybody, not putting them. Uh, you know, we're all in this together. This is this is a, a unified experience. Um, also, to connect in with the heart, but not to um, see the separation in in so many things. So. Um, Ardif, curious your perspective. Uh, I know you share the other two perspectives as well, but is there anything else 
that you would like to share with us on how we can navigate these um, times of great change and separation and unity that's happening together? Yes, of course. First, greetings, Ruben, as well. Secondly, we wish to express that as you are going through this part of the Earth collective consciousness and the acceleration of consciousness that is meant for all the human collaboration and co-creation of expansion for all humans, both individual level and a co-creator collective conscious level, is vitally important to remember. You are part of that collective energy as well. And if your own desire to co-create experience of expansion exists, you will have that expansion. Now, of course, those who do not know that they can expand, those who do not care if they expand, they too would expand, but expand in a much different way. The protocol of the Earth co-created collective consciousness in what humans call ascension is quite in fact, the energy that is most important for the human recognition that things will change. Now, of course, you've looked upon your Earth in the last four years collectively, and you've seen a great deal of that shifting of energy in both your singular energetic perspectives and your collective perspectives as well. And what have you seen mostly in your experience? First, of course, division of consciousness. Secondly, the rekindling of some forms of consciousness. Thirdly, the independent venture upon the experience of what for themselves would be perfect. And that experience, of course, is the vital experience for all of you. Yes, of course, you can play a part of a collective consciousness. You can choose a side that will divide yourself from others more so. But will this serve you for the expansion? This is why the Earth Collective Consciousness is going through hardships and the energetic shifts of hardship itself, that the collective has not desired to come together because it sees separation as essential, because it sees duality as a form of separation in its own conscious form, then it will, of course, experience the energetic form of seeing what separation is. Now we've said previous, and we express again, that what energy that you are seeing that is difficult for humans to feel, perceive, see, and go through, are the collective experiences coming to the surface in order for judgment to be made upon them. Now we do not say judgment as in, the human collective form of judging something as good or bad, but in the collective sins, that is what is required in order to move forward. Are the systems that we have created together as humans good? And the answer for the collective is yes or no. The systems in where the answer is no must be rebuilt. The answers for those that are yes, to refine those systems, to teach those systems to others and experience the growth of those systems. And of course, because humans are very connected with one another, because they are highly social creatures, they must experience it in small groups and collectives, forms of communities that grow past communities in to larger collective senses. There's so much division upon your earth that was directly created by humans themselves. First of all, the dividing of a country into city-states, providences, states, cities, counties, etc. Now all of those still hold a very strong meaning to humans, as it were, and to the collective consciousness. Yet you see that humans finding a vibrational frequency from these independent units are starting to come together to create what it is that they desire within those areas. And it grows and it continues to grow forward. That is what humans are doing in this time of collective consciousness. Now how to move forward is doing just this. If you yourself as an independent creator of consciousness, are truly in alignment with what it is that you desire to do as a human, with what you are as a human, and you align yourself to the most perfect version of yourself, not perfect from another perspective, but perfect for yourself. Then you teach others around you vibrationally. You will teach yourself more about yourself and what is expansion. It is 
truth of understanding oneself, truth of understanding the energetics in which they are co-creating with others. And of course, the entire universe of collective consciousness holds a vibration frequency of oneness in itself, but with the personal and perspective of what that energy is, of course, implemented across the co-creation with others, binding what is good, what is common, what is accepted, and dividing what is not for that collective consciousness. The experience of yourself, being yourself, is truly the only path forward for your own happiness. And then you share that part that you are to be the puzzle piece in the larger collective and when others are doing so, the cohesiveness is pure. The cohesiveness is perfect for the next step of evolution for that collective energy. And when you are happy with yourself, if you are sharing what it is that you are truly excited to share in that collective consciousness, then of course, the collective is perfect with you as a part of that energy. Now, some humans prefer separation. Even those that prefer separation will, of course, get to experience the greatest version of separation for themselves. And when they become tired of that energy, they will also send past the self into their collective. Now, we have understood the misnomer of many humans previous, that those who are separate cannot ascend. In our own perspective, this is not correct. Ascension occurs to all entities. Entities who desire violence and hatred will receive more violence and hatred for themselves until they are done with that system. Then they are able to move forward into something different. Those who desire love, companionship, co-creation will receive more of this in jest and continue forward with their experience until they feel satiated to move to the next. And of course, each of you are doing this as individual components of a collective consciousness and are perfect in doing so. The collective becomes perfect in doing what a collective does, creating a bond for other entities to co-create with one another, creating a format and stage for the individual consciousness to know oneself at the greatest potential. And we thank you for this. Thank you so much. Um... So it's sort of what the, uh, I'll do my Ruben's short summary version of what I was getting out of that was the uh, finding that balance between uh, the individual and the collective, obviously still holding first, following my own passions, my own desires and um, uh, 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 wants and needs, but within the, the knowing of the collective and within that collective experience and sort of harmonizing and finding that best uh that best way would be a way to move forward through this uh tr turbulent time uh we're having with with um humanity's um expansion contraction you know that, that keeps going here so um thank you artif um and uh is there anything to follow up on that did, did i, did I kind of did i get it <laughs> that one. yes of course you understand the greater construct very well. One thing we share in addition is that those who are feeling out of alignment with a part of the collective consciousness, they may feel passionate to speak against that part of the collective energy. Some humans believe that that is not a correct purpose for your energy, but what we share is that by searching your excitement, if it truly is an excitement and not simply a way for you to divert connecting to others or pushing away others, then speak that energy of what you see that is not fulfilling in your collective consciousness will help you either bring greater balance to the collective energy, seeing where blind spots of others been missed or by co-creating experience where you are able to truly test your belief systems. So of course, entering that collective consciousness as a singular individual with your excitements at the forefront will of course work in harmony regardless of what your excitements are. Yeah, sort of using that collective uh, uh, 
push pull uh, response to your beliefs and to see how that um, that can kind of keep your own beliefs in check in a way to see, okay, am I going to extreme in this way or that way? Let's see how the collective is receiving this and 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 using that as a pressure gauge sort of. Yes, of course. You yourself can be a great reflection for yourself. But in the Earth co-create collective consciousness, especially in moments such as this where all humans are working towards expanding oneself, the utilization of both the collective consciousness and your localized community are the perfect mirrors in which to challenge the expression of your own reflection, of course. What a great, um, a great bunch of uh, amazing nuggets to to get from you all to, <laughs> to between now and then that we could actually try to integrate just this information alone. Absolutely, I'm so greatly appreciative, Ruben, of you engaging with these beautiful beings, Robinson Dreen, and the extraordinary beings that they bring through, and this really high level information, inspiration, enlightenment that comes through. And so thank you so much. Yes, I'm very much looking forward to being live together in Sedona at this Transcendence Retreat. Uh, quickly before we depart, uh, might you touch upon the CE5 experience that you will be co-hosting with Rob Rubin? So, um, so yes, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, so yeah, super excited to be back with Rob again. Uh, we did our uh, uh, sort of a early prototype CE5 back in, was it 2015, Rob, back in, in Asheville? Yeah, it was uh, 2015 in our Asheville workshop. That was the first workshop we did there, yeah? That was, yeah, so, so since then, uh, I've been... I know, Suzanne, you had invited Lisa Royal Holt to be part of the event, but because of her schedule, she couldn't she couldn't make it. But um, she has been a big inspiration in in my CE five uh, journey. Uh, I had started way back in two thousand ten. Uh, uh, was at a CE five event that Dr. Uh, Stephen Greer, who coined the phrase CE five, um, uh, I was at one of his events and been to a few. Uh, over the years, but really uh, through the sort of the Lisa Royal, Ron Holt lineage of CE5 uh, uh, contact work is more the uh, version that I've been um, adopting in uh, and adding my own special uh, flares with uh, breath work and um, and been working with Latal, who, uh, who's also going to be able to join us, I heard, and she brings in uh, sound crystal bowls and gongs. And now bringing in Brother Rob with uh, the channeling, I think it's going to be a super fun event uh, where we get to um, sort of use these modalities that have, we've been working with Lisa and honing. And one great part of Lisa's um, uh, work is she also brings in the channeling aspect in real time, which I am so grateful to have with, with Rob here because when Rital and I go solo, we're, we're just doing the meditation aspects. Um, and uh, uh, to have that extra um, channeling modality to it. These are like all tools in our toolkit that we can, you know, throw our fishing line out there to see what we can catch. And when, the more equipment in our box that we have to, uh, to, to cast out there, it's like casting out now, not just a fishing line. We're going to cast out a whole net and see what we can bring back in. So <laughs> super appreciative. To, uh, to to have this um, opportunity to be working with, with Rob and the crew in this way. Thank you. Yes, definitely excited about that. I'm sure that those attending are going to be very uh, anxious to get out there and connect with some of the galactics who are in the skies way above Sedona. And we have night vision goggles that are going to be provided by one of our local uh, UFO Skywatch guides. So it's going to be a really cool experience. Thank you so much. Yes. And so thank you to everyone. We are going to be having this event September 21st through the 23rd at Unity of Sedona. And we're only selling a very limited number of tickets because it is a very individualized, immersive, experiential. And so 
you'll want to register as soon as possible before we sell out. So I hope that you can join us. And again, uh, thank you for tuning into our video. You can go to Sedona Transcendence Retreat dot com and you can also contact me so Suzanne at Suzanne Ross Transcendence dot com. Is there any closing words you'd like to say, uh Ruben? Uh, just I'm super excited to be in Sedona, uh in that vor in the vortex energy. It is a galactic uh, hub of cosmic energies already. So uh to bring this group in and, and to do the work that we're going to do and I'm I'm sure all the attendees bringing their energy in uh, because people who are attracted to this information tend to have the the galactic uh, lineages themselves. So it's going to be one big galactic party. I can't wait. I love that. A galactic party. Very cool. <laughs> Any closing words, Rob? Yeah, I just I just would like to share my, uh, my own excitement. Um, doing these types of things, meeting up with people with these common excitements, uh, seeing my old dear friend Ruben, meeting a bunch of new great people who I met today, um, and all the people who are going to be coming. It's right up my alley. I, I love uh, I love the social aspect of it. And because I'm a deep trans channeler, I don't get to spend as much time with people as sometimes the entities I channel do. So this is always fun for me to get to be a part of, of connecting and, and uh, communicating with everybody too. So I'm really looking forward to it. And the, the energy of Sedona, I've never been, uh, but people who've been there before have told me how amazing. I can't wait. I'm very excited. Thank you. We're so excited you're joining us. And beautiful Sandrine. <sighs> Oh, thank you so much. Yes, I like uh, my face hurts because I've been smiling the entire time. So my excitement is very high and um, I feel like I'm meeting a soul family. And it's just like we've, we haven't spent that much time together. And yet I feel like we've known each other for forever. And so I cannot wait to meet you all in person and also all of the attendees because I feel like the family is just gonna, going to expand like that. And uh, I feel and the feel is just it's going to be so big. I've never been in Sedona, but I kind of feel it. And I can feel being upgraded and attuned. It's like an initiation going all the way there. So I'm really happy and very, very grateful for this opportunity to co-create with you. Thank you so much. Yes. Thank you. So much love and gratitude to all of you, including everybody watching. And we look forward to seeing you in Sedona. Many blessings. Namaste.